In this video, I'm going to look at an old vintage Sony TR6080. This is a six transistor AM radio. It was uh, sold back in maybe, I think, 63, 64. Um, this one was my grandmother's radio and it has not been powered up in over 35 years. So we're going to see whether this thing works. It worked the last time it was turned on. Let's see if it still works. I have two Sony radios here, vintage Sony radios. This one was brought in to be looked at. This is mine. I haven't opened this thing up in years. This was my grandmother's radio. And this goes back to the 19, the 1960s, I would say. That's when I remember her having it. it was in the 1960s and the 1970s. It's a Sony Transistor 6 AM radio. As you can see the markings on the back. Check out the old Sony logo. Or is that the model? TR6080. I guess that's the model number, TR6080. We'll just pop the back off this thing. I hope there's no batteries in it because if there are, we're in trouble. Because this thing hasn't been used in forever. And if there's batteries in this thing after all these years, which there's not. But there's the there's the guts to this one. Ran on three C cells, and as you can see, the battery terminal. Very common on these was the plastic that would hold the, the battery uh, terminal in place broke. And what they used to do was they put a piece of a little block of wood up against here to hold the battery terminal in place. It would hold the three C cells. That little block of wood that they used to put in there. We'll power this thing up with a power supply. We'll see if it works. It takes four and a half volts, so I'll get my, my power supply out. Let's power this thing up and just see whether it actually does anything. So I've got my, my power supply here. We'll plug that in. And set the voltage down to 4.5 volts. So here's the power supply that I built. Set. Okay, we'll take the voltage down here to 4.5 volts. Beauty. Okay. Set. It's now set. You can see this here. It's set to 4.5 volts. Amperage just set it to 2.5, but that's fine. Press the button here. 4.5 volts. Let's see whether this thing actually even will get pick up anything. I ha see. I haven't turned this radio on in in many many years, so I don't know whether it works or not anymore. We'll find out pretty quick. Will it work or won't it? I think we need to clean that volume control before we go any further. Let's get that volume control cleaned. Looks like all the screws to the board have fallen out too. I've got the power obviously disconnected. Okay, let's see if this thing will receive anything now. Okay, we'll reconnect the power. And turn it on. The bottom control is. Okay. Others. 
see if we can. Uh, oh. some more cleaner in there and see if I can get that control a bit cleaner than it is. We can see how much power this drawing is drawing. Zero point. This is cool about this power supply. So 4.5 volts is drawing 0 0.09 amps, 0 0.04 watts. That's why the batteries. I remember my grandmother used to listen to this radio. She used to have. It. She used to have this thing playing every day. Every time I went over to her house, which was uh, almost daily because she lived right next door to me. So I'd go over there almost every day to visit her. And she had this radio, I, I can still picture it now. She had it sitting on her kitchen table, right by the window, and she would listen to CKWX Super Country for the cash call. And she'd have her little notepad there and she'd write down the cash call number because what the radio station would do is it would just phone people at random. And if you knew what the cash call was, you'd win that money. And she used to listen to the radio every day, all day long. And I remember she'd call me over to change the batteries on it. And the batteries would last for months. Like, I, I kid you not, a set of transistor batteries, this is before alkaline batteries, by the way, but at the time you could get batteries, they were flashlight batteries, and then there was transistor batteries. And transistor batteries were, were designed for low current uh, devices, such as transistor radios. And they'd put out less power but they put out a lot of it and a set of batteries used to run would last a couple months because I used to have to go and change the batteries for her when I was a kid uh, anyway a little bit of history there this thing here is at least 50 years old I'm gonna look up the actual I'm gonna look up the actual uh, year of production to see when this thing was made and there's the model of it it's a Sony TR6080 so I looked up this unit. 1963 is the year that this was made, which which makes about which makes sense because I remember this radio when I was very young and I was born in 1963. So this radio has been around as long as I have, 54 years. At this at, at, in 2017, and I, I can remember when I was very young, maybe four or five, going over and you know changing batteries and listening to this thing. So I can remember it very clearly sitting in this case. It always sat in this case. And then one day I actually broke that plastic tab when I was changing the batteries for it. And I remember my uncle who worked for the BC Telephone Company at the time, he actually made a little block of wood and we got the radio working again and it worked for years and again it still works now the volume control is a little bit dirty still but and hey it still picks up music on the radio too only because I'm transmitting it from uh, about uh, 30 feet away on my AM transmitter which was one of the reasons I built that thing was so that I could test my AM radios anyway I don't have to fix this one because it's working. Let's just take a look around the back here. We can look at the... Uh... Oh yeah. That's where all that noise is coming from. 
bloody switching power supply. So on this unit here, we've got six transistors, a 2SB48, I can see that one. Uh, looks like another 2SB48 here. Turn that down because all we're going to get is is hash from this thing. Buck buck uh, power supply, buck converter power supply. Actually, this one's probably this one's probably just an inverter type. But I'm sure it's using a I'm sure it's using a buck regulator. It would be a buck regulator because the uh, the input voltage on here is like 40 volts, and this thing we can set it anywhere from you know point one all the way up to 40 odd volts. Right now, the, the input voltage is floating around 40 volts because uh, I'm feeding it 120. But uh, if we look at the uh, the unit here, I mean, there's there's not many uh, electrolytic capacitors on this thing. There's one, two, looks like three, four. It's four little electrolytics, but obviously they're still okay. Here's our transistors here: one, two, three, four five and six those are the six transistors and as far as electrolytic capacitors go on this thing we've got one two three four four electrolytics looks like and that's it here's our tuning capacitor see it says maximum one uh, 166 picofarads is the maximum which it uh, is, looks like it's tuned down to about the minimum now i'm transmitting at uh, 1500 on my little transmitter I've got a hum. I know my transmitter hums because it doesn't know the words. Ha 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 ha. I have uh, no ground on it, so uh, unless I ground it properly, it picks up a bit of hum. Also, it also interferes with the MP3 player that's sitting on top of it. Uh, I guess the cheap MP3 player I'm using is not very well shielded. There's a traffic station. Not a lot we can pick up on AM here. I got a lot of noise. That's uh, that, that's a quick look at this thing. Not a heck of a lot to uh, show on it because it's working. Other than the volume control itself is still, I've cleaned it, but it's been sitting so long it's going to take a little bit of working in to get that cleaner to really clean this up. I thought you guys might appreciate looking at this old beast and had it needed to be repaired, uh, it, I would have repaired it. But. Uh, the other one that I showed you at the beginning, the one in the wood uh, cabinet, which I think is probably a very, very similar set to this. That's why, that's why I compare the two. Let's just take a look at it, because I'll be doing a repair video on this one, because this one doesn't work. But let's just uh, let's just take a look at them at the, front, the back of them. 
so we can see the, the guts because I think they're, they're probably similar. This one might be a little bit older actually. This is a TR-72, so I'm gonna look this one up. So I think this one is older. But uh, we look in the back of here. It, it almost looks like, it al yeah, this is definitely older. Look at the transistors in this one. These are the transistors here. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one's a seven transistor job. And it's got some really old electrolytic capacitors in here. They probably all have to be changed on this one. But uh, anyway, this almost looks like as if this was, uh, if you look at the, if you look at the, just the chassis on this thing, like earphone and phono, like right, earphone and phone. Um, it almost looks like this uh, unit here uh, actually was in a plastic case before and someone built a wooden case for it but nope it looks like it, you know with, with with all this the markings on here it, I think it's uh, it's original this was something that they sold never seen one of these before right but this has got to be older but anyway that's a separate video but I uh, hope you enjoyed looking at this old uh, 1963 hope you enjoyed this little Sony transistor uh, radio and I look down memory lane for uh, old transistor radios we'll uh, catch you again real soon I'll turn this noisy thing off that fan is most annoying we'll catch you again real soon